April 2014. This month marks the beginning of the spring climbing season on Mount Everest. Nepal's government has granted permission for climbing to more than 39 expeditions, totaling more than 330 members for the current climbing season. Over 300 mountaineers attempt to climb Mount Everest each year via the conventional Southeast Ridge Route, established in 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay. When approaching Everest from Nepal's southern flank, climbers must first make their way via the treacherous Khumbu Icefall. The Khumbu Icefall, the first significant challenge for climbers, stretches from 18,000 to 19,000 feet and is located directly above the base camp. It is one of the mountain's most ruthless killers. Khumbu Glacier moves from Camp 1 at a height of 19,900 feet to base camp at 17,600 feet, at a rate of a few feet each day. As it does so, it splits into towering columns, disintegrating ice ledges, deep crevices continuously shifting, and walls prone to collapsing. Through the Sagar Mata Pollution Control Committee, the government of Nepal employs a team of Sherpas every year, known as the Icefall Doctors. These doctors are in charge of a single hazardous task, which consists of threading ropes and constructing aluminium ladders over crevices and up cliffs in order to create a path through the icefall. The west shoulder of Everest, a mile-high slope that supports a massive hanging glacier, rises directly above the icefall. Regular caving of the glacier sends chunks of ice hurtling toward the path. At the base camp, hundreds of climbers, guides and support staff are waiting for next month's optimal weather conditions so that they can attempt to scale the 29,035-foot summit. April 18, 2014, in the early hours of the morning, 25 Sherpa guides started the ascent of the mountain for this climbing season. They are transporting supplies to the upper camps for their international clients' upcoming summit attempt next month. The Sherpa are prominent people in Nepal's mountainous regions. Many of them earn a living as guides on Mount Everest and many other Himalayan ranges. As working in the mountains is inherently risky, most have years of expertise and always take the necessary safety measures. However, the misfortunes that occur in the highlands almost invariably take people by surprise. At 6.30 in the morning, when Sherpas were passing through the hazardous route, the avalanche started on the western shoulder of Everest and proceeded to slide onto the Kumbu Icefall. A group of rescuers, guides and mountaineers rushed to the area as soon as they learned about the avalanche. People from Camp 1 and higher up in the Icefall quickly made their way down to the area. However, the trail leading up to the scene was impassable from below at the time of the accident. The three badly injured survivors were airlifted out of the area by 10.49 and they were en route to Periche, Lukla and finally Kathmandu via low-altitude helicopter for medical attention. Later on in the day, a total of six other people were pulled to safety. Since the glacier was still expected to carve at any moment, the rescue effort resorted to body recovery mode. By the end of the day, 13 had been accounted for as dead and 3 were still missing. 8 of the 13 bodies that were recovered and brought down were returned to the families of the deceased in the Everest region, while the remaining 5 bodies were transported to Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal. By April 22, 2014, the missing body of 3 Sherpas had not been found and most certainly will not as the body recovery effort was formally discontinued this day. The resulting avalanche claimed the lives of 16 people and injured 9 more, making it one of the worst days for mountaineers on Everest. The tragedy led to accusations that the Nepalese government charges steep fees for climbing licenses but provides inadequate support for the guides who work for them. Sherpas claimed they do not receive a fair share of climbing royalties even though they take on a disproportionate percentage of the risk. There was great outrage after the accident since the Nepalese government had first only offered $400 to each family of the victims. In response, Sherpas and mountain guides threatened that they would stop all Everest climbing.
Because of this decision, hundreds of foreign mountaineers, many of whom had already spent tens of thousands of dollars to climb Mount Everest, were forced to abandon their plans and return home. On the day of the incident, the Sherpas were navigating a path along the icefall's extreme northern edge. Staying near the edge shortens the time spent on the icefall, but it also puts them in danger of being swept away by an avalanche on the high slopes of Everest's western shoulder. Although an approach from the center would be less vulnerable to avalanches, falling seracs have been frequent in recent years. Therefore, the icefall doctors had frequently determined that perhaps the avalanche risk along the northern edge was the less dangerous. When the avalanche struck, the Sherpas were huddled together under an area known to be dangerous. They had been forced to wait because a ladder that crossed a crevice had just been repaired. The gathering violated a standard climbing safety practice. Disperse out when there is an obvious threat. Once the ice detached from the hanging serac, it was too big, too fast and too deadly for them to have any chance. The serac was estimated to have been 113 feet wide and weighed close to 14,300 tons based on comparisons between the before and after photos of the retreating glacier. This 113-foot ice mass rushed over the hill from a height of 1,300 feet with unfathomable intensity as it crashed down Everest's west shoulder, pulverizing everything in its path and even detonating, blowing away scree and bedrock. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, issued a warning in March 2014, a month before the tragic incident about the unpredictable weather conditions induced by increased temperatures due to human-caused climate change. In the wake of the tragedy, several researchers and mountaineers have hypothesized that the risks climbers may face are growing due to climate change and the melting of Everest glaciers. An expert on the dangers of Himalayan glaciers, glaciologist Jeffrey Cargill of the University of Arizona provided some context. Crevices and icefalls will always be a part of the Everest landscape, as long as glaciers are present. Snow avalanches happen regardless of climate change and will continue to happen long after the last glaciers have melted. Cargill continued, however, with climate change and the glaciers thinning, we can assume both glacier and rock avalanches will happen in areas where they did not happen in the past. There will likely be changes in the placement of danger zones and perhaps the intensity of some risky processes, but this does not imply widespread disruption or that everything will get worse. Your past actions will not be a good indicator of your future conduct. According to research conducted by the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development in Kathmandu, the size of Himalayan glaciers has decreased by 21% over the past three decades. Another indicator of rising temperatures and melting glaciers is a glacier lake 13 times larger now than it was 40 years ago, located downstream from Mount Everest.